Good morning, Callahan Road Baptist Church. We're glad that you're here to worship with us this morning online here at uh, on Facebook. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. We're, we're so glad that you're here to worship with us. We're going to start off our worship this morning with a song called Mighty to Save. I hope you're at home, uh, dressed, ready for worship, and sing along with us. Everyone needs compassion, love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness, the kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Isn't it amazing, no matter whether you're here or at home, we serve a God that conquered death, hell, and the grave. And we're here to worship Him today. Sing along with me. So take me as you find me, all my fears and failures. Feel my life again. I give my life to follow everything I believe in. Now I surrender. I surrender, Savior, He can move the mountains, my God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave. Sing it out. Shine your light in. Shine your light in. Let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light in. Let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. Savior. He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. He is mighty to save forever. Author of salvation. He rose and conquered the grave. Jesus conquered the grave. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save, He is mighty to save forever, author of salvation, He rose and conquered the grave, Jesus conquered the grave, shine your light and let the whole world see, we're singing for the glory of the risen King. Jesus, shine your light and let the whole world see. We're singing for the glory of the risen King. And all God's Amen. people say, Amen. Good to have you this morning visiting us with Facebook and those online. Many of you are our regular members, and right now I'm sitting in a sanctuary with only two people. And, uh, but anyway, I thank the Lord that uh, they're here. They're here just to encourage me and, and be, uh, just hear the Word of God. But it's not about me. It's not about them. It's about the Lord Jesus. So I pray this morning you've gotten up and you're out of your pajamas. You're not 
sitting around drinking a cup of coffee, but you are dressed and ready to worship the King of kings and Lord of lords. So as we begin our day, let's pray. Can we do that? Father, I do thank you for this day. And Lord, it is by grace and by mercy and by the power of Christ we come before your presence. Father, Lord, we love you and bless you and thank you for who you are. Oftentimes, we want to praise you for what you've done. But God, we want to praise you for who you are. Because of who you are, you do what you do. And what you do is good and faithful. So, Father, this morning, with nothing on our agenda, Lord, we're not going to ask for anything other than your glory for your honor. Lord, have your way. Father, Lord, we come to worship in our living rooms. We've come to worship in a building. Some may be watching and listening by the radio or by the computer. But Father, Lord, I think that the Word of God is not contained in walls. It's not contained by space and time. Father, you transcend all that. So, Father, I pray that your Word, Holy Spirit, your grace and your mercy, just permeate a life and a home and a family and a marriage and a job and a, and a health situation. Father, I pray that we as the body of Christ have ears to hear and a heart to receive the Word of God that every day is our shield and our fortress. Father, I pray for those that are watching this morning and maybe for the first time. Lord, they're maybe on drugs, they're on sin, and Lord, whatever it may be. Father, they need to be saved. And Father, they're looking for something. They're looking for hope. Father, the Word of God says Jesus is the living hope. So, Father, I pray for that young lady, that young man that needs Jesus. Father, I pray they be saved. Father, I pray today be the day that changes everything because of Christ. Father, we love you. We bless you. And as we come to worship, we lift up the name of Jesus. And Father, Lord, you'll draw all men into your presence. Again, Father, thank you for this day. We love you. We bless you. We ask God you have your way. For in Christ's name I pray. And I believe, and I thank you. Amen. Jared, lead us. This morning, our hope is in nothing but the cross of Jesus this morning. And, and I just invite you to worship with us, to sing along with us as we worship this morning. Father God, just thank you for this day. Be with us as we worship. You're invited here to this place. We love you, Lord, and we praise you. Amen. Thank you for the cross, Lord. Thank you for the price you paid. Bearing all my sin and shame, in love you came and gave amazing grace. Thank you for this love, Lord. Thank you for the nail-pierced hands. Wash me in your cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on your throne. Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious. Clean. 
cleansing flow. Now all I know is your forgiveness and embrace. Worthy is the Lamb seated on your throne. Crown you now with many crowns. You reign victorious.
This next one is a song that I know you'll be familiar with. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe in a hill called Mount Calvary. I believe whatever the cost. And when time has surrendered and earth is no more, I'll still claim to the old rugged cross. There are things as we travel this earth shifting sands that transcends all the reason of man. But the things that matter God's people say, amen. Thank you, Jerry. Thank you, guys. Hey, this morning, I want to spend some time with you um, just praying. You know, I heard a great quote the other day, and I, and, and, and I knew this, but sometimes I forget it, Curtis, Dennis, I forget it. Prayer is a time that we can come tell God what we want. You know what prayer is more about than anything else? 
It's about listening more than talking. It's about listening. It's allowing our heart to get in tune with what God wants. So many times we want to come to God and tell God what we want and don't give him time to tell us what we need to hear. And, and I want us to spend some time this morning in prayer. Yes, we're going to lay our petitions before the Lord, but I literally want you to think about this. Lord, instead of me telling you what you want to hear, Lord, tell my, why, my heart what I need to hear. Lord, I want to know what you want me to do. So as we pray, can we just ask God to speak to us? Let's do that. Father, we love you. We bless you. And Father, Lord, there's so many things in our hearts. There's so many things in our lives. And Father, Lord, the word of God says to boldly enter to the throne of grace. And Father, we come as children, as heirs of the kingdom of God. Father, Lord, we've been grafted into the vine by the blood of Jesus. And Lord, we have access to your heart to your passion and to your power, to your authority. God, we want to come and just lay all our needs before you. And Father, we want to confess. Lord, instead of listening, we, we speak. So Father, the next few minutes, God, I want to ask that you speak to us. And Father, Lord, instead of you getting in tune with us, may we get in tune with you. So I'm going to ask the body of Christ right now, be quiet, to be still, and let God speak. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for speaking to us. And Father, we confess our sins and we ask God that you forgive us. And Father, Lord, we don't shut up and listen. So Holy Spirit, you have your perfect way in our lives. Reveal to us your glory. Reveal to us who you are every fresh and every day, every day. Father, we know that we've got all of the gospel. we got all of Jesus. But Lord, we've shortchanged you. I'm not giving you all of us. So Father, this morning, maybe for the first time in a long time, God, may me listen. And Father, Lord, we do come this morning with needs. Father, Lord, we're keenly aware you know what those needs are. Father, I pray for the body of Christ called Callahan. I pray for the body of Christ where the gospel is preached today, whether it's in Knoxville, across the states of America, across the world, where the gospel is proclaimed that Jesus crucified and raised from the dead. I pray, Father, Lord, power and authority and just great mercy. Just, Lord, be experienced. I pray for people to be saved. Father, thank you for Don, who's here today. Thank you for Mike. I ask God that you bless them today. And I pray, Father, for those that are listening and watching by Facebook and our website. God, I, I thank you, Lord, that you're doing a good work there. Father, there are many in our church right now that are dealing with COVID. Father, particularly, we lift up Joe this morning. and We ask God that you do in his life what no doctor can do, what no medicine can do. God, we do thank you for the medicine. We do thank you for the doctors. But God, we need the hand of God just to bless his life. Lord, you've already saved his soul. He's redeemed completely. But Father, this old body breaks down. This old flesh is weak. So Father, we thank you, Lord, for what you're doing with Joe and Pam and the family. God, we're just going to trust your provision. We're going to trust your power. Father, I pray for all those in the body of Christ that are dealing with COVID through our church. We ask God that you just can remind them how faithful and how good you are. And Father, I pray for health. I pray they be healthy. I pray they be happy. And Father, I want to remind them, Father, that they've got health and they've got happiness because they've got hope. Hope in Christ and Him crucified and raised from the dead. But I do pray for the gospel this morning that, Lord, it be preached with boldness and authority. Father, I pray, Lord, that you'll guard my mouth, guard my heart, guard my mind. 
Father, I pray that I just be a vessel that you will use. Though I'm unworthy, you make me worthy. Though I'm unfit, you make me fit. Though I'm unclean, you make me clean. Again, Lord, we love you. Bless you. We ask God that your will be done. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. If Jerry comes back and leads one more time, uh, I do, if, I, if I forget a name, please forgive me. Uh, but I know we have Joe that's dealing with the COVID. I know we got the Sester family that's dealing with the COVID. Jared had it last week, but he came back negative, so he's over it. Pam has come back negative. She's over it. Uh, I know we've got many in our church. As of right now, the best of my knowledge, if I've missed you, I apologize. We've got basically 12 people who have gone through the COVID over the last five to six days. Some are coming out, some are going in, some are in the middle of it. So I would, uh, you continue to pray for those in the body of Christ. And if you don't have COVID, just be smart, uh, be diligent, wash your hands, put your mask on, and, and be safe. And, um, but I want to tell you real quick, I, I preached a message um, several months ago when this thing took place. What do you do when your hair's on fire? What do you do when you're out of control? Listen, you and I as the body of Christ, we're not out of control. We're not. We have one who's in control. And we're going to trust the living God for all our needs. Now, we're going to be smart. We're going to be diligent. We're going to be wise. But we're going to be confident that God loves us. He's taking care of things. And his will will be done. Jared? Many of you have just um, overwhelmed our family with uh, care and love and um, just the, the prayers that you've sent our way. And uh, I just want to say thank you for those. Um, uh, we are we are so blessed uh, to have so many people uh, in and around our lives that that love us, and um, we're just overwhelmed by the care that you've sent our way. And um, and don't know what we would be able to do without our church family. But um, this morning, <coughs> I wanted to uh, to take the opportunity to to sing a song that that. My dad, I've heard him sing all of my life, um, and it's an Andre Crouch song, and it says, Through It All, and we, we sang it back uh, a few months ago, and, um, but today I wanted to sing it for you guys, because it basically talks about the trials in our life, when we go through them, um, we're only going through them to make us stronger, and the Lord is walking step by step by step with us all the way through our trials. And uh, this has been a trying time for my family. Um, as many of you know, my dad is, uh, he's kind of our rock and, and um, besides Jesus, of course. Um, but that's where, that's where our faith comes from, is from Jesus. And, and uh, my parents taught us that as kids. And, um, and so I'd be very hypocritical if I couldn't stand before you to s today and say that uh, Jesus is still on his throne. Uh, he's still in control. And um, uh, we're just going through this, this difficult time, this valley, uh, but um, without the valley, we wouldn't have the mountain. And uh, I'm just so thankful. So sing along with me as we sing this song, Through It All. I've had many tears and sorrows. I've had questions for tomorrow. There have been times I didn't know right from wrong. But in every situation, God gave blessed consolation. And my trials come to only make me strong. Through it all. in Jesus I've learned to trust in God through it all through it all I've learned to depend upon his word I've been to lots of places and I've seen a lot of faces there have been times I felt so all alone, but in my lonely hours, 
Yes, those precious lonely hours, Jesus let me know that I was his very own. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through upon his word I thank him for the mountains and I thank him for the valleys I thank him for the storms he's brought me through for if I'd never had a problem I wouldn't know my God could solve it I never know what faith in God could do. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all, through it all, I've learned to depend upon his word. Let's sing the chorus one more time. Do it all. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to trust in Jesus. I've learned to trust in God. Through it all. Through it all. I've learned to depend upon Amen. Thank you, Jared. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you, Dennis. If you have your Bibles this morning, which I hope you have, you're already out of pajamas. Uh, you're not sitting around drinking a cup of coffee. You're, you're in church this morning, and, you, and you're ready to worship this morning. So grab your Bibles, and there should be an outline up on your screen. There's not an outline to fill out this morning, but you'll have one on the screen. And you may want to grab a piece of paper there at your house and jot some notes down. But go to the book of John chapter 14. Uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been teaching and preaching about following the example of Jesus. And we're going to make reference to that in a few minutes. And uh, the last couple of weeks, we've been dealing with uh, just loving Jesus and following Jesus. And, and, and it reminds me that uh, we preached in chapter 12 one week. We, we preached in chapter 13 one week. And now we're going to be in chapter 14 one week. And, and if you remember, in chapter uh, 13, it talked about Jesus. matter of fact, go ahead and go to chapter 13. And I just want to read a couple of verses to you. Look at chapter 13. Now before the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour had come, that he should depart from this world to go to his Father. Having loved his own who were of the world, he loved them to the end. You know, in the outline there, I, I, I kind of share with you that one thing we know about following Jesus, he gives us an example of how to be faithful. You see here, he knew all things. Remember, we talked about that and, and how he knew what was going to happen. He knew the cross. He knew the rejection. He knew the price that was going to be paid. He knew the blood that was going to be shed. But knowing all things, he went forward for you and for me. Now, I know for a fact you wouldn't have done that, and I wouldn't have done that. Our flesh wouldn't have let it do it. But Jesus submitted to the faithfulness to his Father. Matter of fact, if you keep reading, if you remember, uh, he talked about, we talked about how do you follow Jesus. You follow through faithfulness. We, we follow Jesus through love. Look at verse uh, 1 again. Having loved his own, he were, that when the word he loved them to the end. One of the ways that we follow Jesus is through faithfulness. Faithfulness in our home, faithfulness in our marriage, faithfulness to the word of God, faithfulness to our community, faithfulness to the, to the house of God, just faith to the Holy Spirit. But also we're, we follow Jesus by being loving, loving him, loving the things of him. Loving his word, loving his heart. What he loves, we should love. Can I tell you that again? What he loves, we should love. And that's some of our problems. We don't want to love the things that Jesus loves. You know, it's too, it's too, we, gotta, we, we may have to quit something. We may have to give something up if we love what Jesus loves. The Bible says, listen, they shall know you by the love that you have for me. So one of the examples of following Jesus is through faithfulness. 
One of the examples of following Jesus is by loving. And if you keep reading this text, look at verse 2. The supper being ended, the devil having already put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus knowing, there's that word again, that the Father had given him all things to his hand, that he had come from the Father and was going to the Father. He rose and at supper and laid aside his garment and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet. So we learned a couple of weeks, one of the ways of following Jesus is by his example. He was faithful, he was loving, and then he was serving. He, he humbled himself as a servant to come to you and I to not only wash the disciples' feet as an example, but to show you that he literally laid aside his, de- not his deity, but laid aside his, his authority and came to a humble servant, though he was all God, all man, he never lost himself as the deity, but he humbled himself as a servant and bowed down and served these men. One of the ways that we follow Jesus is through faithfulness. One of the ways we follow Jesus is by serving. One of the ways we serve Jesus is by loving. Can, can you say this morning at the fall of Christ that I want to be faithful, uh, that, I, that I want to be loving, and that I want to be serving? And then the next week we went on down and we, and we got over to chapter uh, 13. So go over to uh, chapter, uh, I'm going to start chapter 12. Go back to chapter 12. Because one thing we learned last week, when you read a chapter in the Bible and you're doing some, some studying, when you read a chapter to really get a hold of what's happening in that chapter, Read the one previous, the, the one prior to. So if we read chapter 13, what's happening in chapter 12 to get Jesus to where he is in 13? So if we go to chapter 12, we see here it's the story of Lazarus dying and, and Jesus bringing him back to, de- uh, to death. Matter of fact, look at verse 12, verse six, verse 1. And six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany where Lazarus was, who had been dead, whom he had raised from the dead. So we, we learned two weeks ago about Jesus and how we are to uh, follow Jesus through faithfulness and love and, and service. And then we looked at verse 12 and said, who is following Jesus? And if you remember, we looked at Martha. Remember Martha? She had the, the ointment and she, she, she uh, anointed Jesus' feet with uh, the ointment and she washed it with her hair. So we had Martha serving. We saw Martha being faithful. We saw Martha being loving. And then if you follow this chapter, we found another person. It was Lazarus, remember? He's the main character. How can you forget Lazarus? Uh, he was once dead, now he's alive. And, and the Bible says he is now with Jesus. He's identifying with Jesus. And if you read the text of chapter 12, which gets us to chapter 13, he, uh, the Bible says the, the, the Pharisees and the rulers came to see Jesus to shut him up and to kill him. And also Lazarus, they wanted him dead too. You know why they wanted Lazarus dead? Because he was faithful, he, he, was, he was loving, and he was serving. What a wonder. So we had the, the how, and now we have the who, and then there was another person in this text. Remember last week we talked about Martha, and, and we talked about Lazarus, and then we talked about Judas. Uh, Judas was the one, if you remember, he was the treasurer. Uh, the, as a matter of fact, you read the text, there's two words that are used about Judas. He was a lover of the money box. Look that up, the money box. He loved the wallet. He, he loved Uncle Sam's dollar. He, he loved the, the currency. The Bible says he would use the currency out of his own heart and use it for his own good and for his own gratification. Matter of fact, you look at Judas and he had a problem following Jesus. He wasn't faithful. He wasn't loving. He wasn't serving. Well, preacher, does it say in that verse, he, he kind of got on to Martha and said, what are you doing spending all this extravagant money on this perfume? And matter of fact, the Bible says it's one year's wages, one year's earnings that they anointed Jesus. And here's what he said, could not this money have been used better? We could have bought things for the poor and given to the poor. And I love the next verse. And the Bible says, Judas did not care about the poor. He didn't care about the poor. It was all about his ego. It was all about religion. But the Bible says that's when he says he was a lover of the money box. And oftentimes we come to church, and you know them as well as I know them. And Jesus is sovereign and Lord, but there's a lot of folks playing church. A lot of folks playing religion. A lot of folks playing Sunday school. 
A lot of folks playing this and playing that, but they don't have a faithfulness. They don't have a love. They don't have a servitude toward Christ, and that was Judas. And then there was one more, if you finish in chapter 12. Uh, the Bible says many came to Christ because of Lazarus. Uh, they have heard the word that Lazarus was dead. There was no doubt that he had died. Matter of fact, many and maybe have gone to the funeral, and he was in that tomb for four days, and, and they may have been there, and Jesus, Jesus spoke his name, and Jesus, uh, Lazarus came out of the tomb, and, and many came to find out what was going on with Jesus and Judas. And the Bible says many came to Christ. They believed. One of the reasons that you and I need to be faithful, even when it's Lazarus days in our lives, you could be the instrument that leads others to Christ. Through your turmoil, and through your heartache, and through your death, or through your circumstances, God could use you to bring others to Him. God could use your story. God could use your heartache. God could use your circumstances to let others see Jesus in you. Hey, I want what you've got. I I've been through death. I've been through heartache. I've been through a divorce. I've been through misery. I've been through health. I've been through, I've been through hell on earth. I don't know how I'm going to get through it, but I've seen you go through it. How'd you get through it? Being faithful, being loving, being servitude has a great example for God to use. So this morning, I want to kind of walk with you. So let's kind of keep going through this thing, and I'm going to finish it up this morning as we move into the uh, Thanksgiving holiday. So grab your Bibles, go to chapter 14. You ready? I know you're at home, but stand up anyway. Let's stand. Let's read the Word of God together. You ready? Chapter 14, verse 1. For let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. Where I am, you will be there also. And you know where I go. And you know the way. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? And Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. No one coming to the Father except through me. If you had known me, you have known my Father also. And from now on, you will know him and have seen him. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. And Father, Lord, by the example of Jesus that we find in chapter 14, Father, I pray that we follow your example in all things. Father, Lord, may we be faithful. May we be loving. May we be serving. And Father, we will never be those three things, faithful, loving, or serving, until we are faithful, loving, and serving to you. And Father, Lord, when we are faithful and loving and serving and following your example, Father, you enable us. You empower us. You equip us to go into a lost world and be light. Father, without your power and without your presence, we will come up empty and vain every single time. So, Father, I thank you this morning. May we see and hear and experience the examples of Jesus as we follow him. Of course, in Christ's name I pray. Amen. You may be seated. There's a couple of things I want to do. In your outline, I wrote up, you have it on your screen. There's a couple of things. There's the how to follow Jesus. We looked at that in chapter 13. We may make the chapter 12 and saw the who that followed Jesus. And then we get to chapter 14 and we see the why follow Jesus. So I want to kind of grab with you with the why. Number one, here's why we follow Jesus. I follow Jesus because of his promises. Look at verse 2. You ready? Go back to chapter 14. Look at verse 2. We're we'll starting at verse 1. Let your heart not be troubled. I think every one of us right there can stop. Let not your heart be troubled. Has your heart ever been troubled? H has your life ever been turned upside down that you, you mourn, you grieve, you just can't get through the circumstance of life? We just have heartache and difficulty. And I love what Jesus does here. He says, let not your heart be troubled. Who is he speaking to? Yes, he's talking to the 12, but I think he's talking to everybody there. Because that transcends time and space and in culture, you and I can live right there. Lord, my heart has been in trouble with sin, with iniquity, with heartache, with difficulties of life circumstances. He goes, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. 
in my Father's house are many mansions. Now, one of the reasons I find it beneficial to follow Christ, because he's made a provision for me, Don, Mike, Curtis. He made provision. Look what he says here. In my house are many mansions. If it were not so, I told you, I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that great to know? That God has given me provision, not on this side of eternity, but on the other side of eternity. God has given me provision of grace and mercy and, and forgiveness of sin. God has given me provision of power and authority by the word of God. I can't do anything, but by the gospel of Jesus, I can do what? All things. Man, isn't that great to know? Who provided that? The cross, the blood, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So when he says that, if you've got troubles, but listen, I've given every provision for you during your times of trouble. I prepared a place for you. Aren't you glad this is not our resting spot? Matter of fact, one thing I'm going through right now, I started it uh, Friday morning at the house, and I'm going through it. And if you want to join me, you're more than welcome to join me. I'm on chapter 6 right now, so I'll catch you up. I'm in the book of Ecclesiastes. Good Lord, preacher, why are you there? <laughs> Couldn't you find another chapter, another book to read than Ecclesiastes? When the Bible starts out, the preacher begins to say, and it's Solomon, Solomon's the greatest man that ever lived, wisdom and, and knowledge. And if I could sum up thus far what I've learned in chapters 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6, I was there again this morning, if I could sum up what Solomon tells me and what the Word of God tells me in Ecclesiastes, the less I talk, the better I'll be. The less time I spend speaking, the more I'm going to be all better off. See, sometimes we want to talk, 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 and not listen. And the Bible says words, work, they're all vanity. Because, you know, this whole world is going to end. He talks about men dying and men living, wicked dying, wicked living. We all got one thing in common. We're all going to die. But here's the difference. My provision that when I leave this old earth and when I leave this old world, my provision is in heaven. God has prepared a, a place for me. It is a place of glory and honor and praise. Well, how did he prepare that place? When he died on the cross. When he lived and died and was buried and rose from the dead, he said, I'm going to give you provision. Until I die on the cross, you can't get here. Sin has separated you from the glory of God. It has separated you from the power of God. It has separated you from the presence of God. But I'm going to bring down the veil. I'm going to separate that veil. And you now can enter in. Isn't that great to know that God provided that for you? So we saw the, 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 the who and we saw the, 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 the what, but now I look at the why. Why do I follow Jesus? Because he provided a way of escape that I'll find it in no other. I can't find it in pleasure. I can't find it in money. I can't find it in power. I can't find it in self-esteem. I can't find it in relationship. I can't find it in religion. I can't find it in church. I can't find it in you. So where do I find that provision? You believe in God? You believe in me. Not because you just said it, but he showed it. He proved it that he was God. He rose from the dead. Not only did he remind yourself, we've already learned this, when we read chapter 13, how do I get a true understanding of what's happening in 13? We go back and look at chapter 12. What happened in 12 that got him to 13? What happened in 13 that got him to 14? How can he say that? Had he not already just read, and did we not read that he raised Lazarus from the dead in chapter 13? He raised Lazarus. Ra Lazarus could not have done it himself. He needed Jesus. By the way, who raised Jesus? He said, no one takes my life. I lay it down freely, and I'll raise myself. See, aren't you glad that he has that power? Why was he able? Because he is God. He is sovereign. He's good. He's favor. He is the I am. So why do I follow Jesus? Because he has made provision. He's just not glory in heaven, just not streets of gold, just not a mansion, but he has provided me a way of escape. Number two, why do I follow Jesus? Because he has made provision. Why do I follow Jesus? Because he... Gave me a promise. Look at verse 3. You ready? Now, I love this. You ready? Let's read the whole text. Verse 1. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. In my Father's house from any mansions. If it were not so, I've told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Isn't that a great provision? Look at verse 3. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again. Isn't that a great promise, Mike? That Christ is coming again. 
And as he descended into the heavens on, after his resurrection in the book of Acts, he said, why do you stand and gaze? For this one who is leaving will come again in all his glory. And I'm so glad courtesy's coming for me. He's not sending Michael. He's not sending an archangel. He's not sending, sending the seraphims and the pharisim. He's sending him. He's coming. And on his own. Listen, I'm so glad he's coming. And when he comes, he's taking me to the provision. Why do I follow Jesus? Because he is faithful, he is loving, and he has served me. Can I say that again? Why do I follow Jesus? Because he has been faithful to me, he's been loving to me, and he's been serving me even though I don't deserve it. Man, if you just knew the wretchedness of this old preacher, I am saved by grace and grace alone. Man, I, I was praying this morning. I said, Lord, you know my flesh. You know my heart. You know my mind. You know everything about me. And yet, you're faithful to me. And yet, you love me. And yet, you serve me. How is that even possible? Through Christ Jesus, the Lord. If I did not have Jesus, I would have no provision of salvation. If I didn't have Jesus in his faithfulness, in his servanthood, in his loving, I would not have any promises. He said, well, I go to prepare a place for you, and I'm going to come back and receive you into my own. Matter of fact, if you look at chapter, uh, same chapter, go over to ch verse nine, uh, chapter 15, he talks about that just a little bit. Look up verse 15, same chapter. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I'll pray the Father, and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever. Not only has God promised that he will come back, but he promised me he will not leave me alone while I'm here on the earth. You realize what Jesus did when he left. He said, I must go to the Father, but I'll send to you what? A comforter. Someone that will walk with you. Now listen, here's one thing I've learned about us good old Baptists. For years, we, for, for, for most of my life, as a young man in, in my growth of Christ, you know, I was really never taught the Holy Spirit. I was taught the Father, and I was taught Jesus, and we, you know, the Holy Spirit's there, but I was never really pushed and, 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 and matured in the Holy Spirit. Do you realize without the Holy Spirit, you can't get saved? Unless the Holy Spirit convicts you of sin and draws you into repentance, you, you can't even get saved. Man, the Holy Spirit's a wonderful part of who God is. He's the triune God. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no conviction of sin. Without the Holy Spirit, there's no, there's, no, there's, no, there's no repentance of sin. The Holy Spirit's job and his function is to honor Jesus, lift up Jesus, but draw you into repentance to do you and know Christ. And I love what he says here. Listen, you're going to have days of trouble. Did he not say that in verse 1? You're going to have troubles and you're not going to make it. And I'm going to prepare a place for you. But I'm going to leave you someone that's going to help you through your troubled life. I'm going to help you through joys and peace and love. and so I'm going to help you when no one else is there. And it's the Holy Spirit. Matter of fact, let's keep reading. He said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments, and, and I'll pray the Father, and he will give you another helper. Verse 6, 17, verse 17, the Spirit of truth, that's who the Holy Spirit is, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees me nor knows me, but you know him, for he dwells in you. Isn't that great to know, Curtis? Jesus sent the Holy Spirit to dwell in you. Don, isn't that great to know? That because you got troubled life, he dwells in you to get you through the troubled life. How does he get you through the troubled life? Through his provision and through his promise that I'll not leave you as orphans. Keep reading that chapter. That's a word he, I use tonight as orphans. What does an orphan mean? You have no family. You have no daddy. You have no mama. You have no structure. You have no community. You're all alone, abandoned, an orphan. One of the things that we do, and, and I thank the Lord, we are blessed. We have a strong presence in Africa. Matter of fact, I talked to Miss Grace last week on the ground in, 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 in Salama, and she sends her love and her grace to us. And I hope very soon to be able to get back over there. Right now with COVID, I can't. But we literally support, and we started a church there, and, and we deal with orphans every day. And they're trying to get more and more orphans into the, 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 the school and into the home. But we can only minister to so many people because of economical reasons. 
But I've literally sat down, and many of you have gone with me and, and met these children that are orphans. Uh, their mothers and daddies have either run away and just abandoned them in the streets. I'm talking six years old and seven year old kids. Uh, we, we've met kids where their daddy had died of AIDS. AIDS is very rampant there. Uh, we've met kids where daddy had died of AIDS. Mama couldn't handle it, so she just sold herself into slavery, and she is now in the slave trafficking. They have no idea where they are. And these kids are left abandoned in the streets to fend for themselves as six and seven-year-old kids, being sucked into darkness, being sucked into sin, being sucked into all kind of ungodliness. Do you realize they're orphans? And God said, I'll take care of the orphan. You know, look up at James. James says, pure religion is this, take care of the orphans and the widows. Because we're going to have days of trouble. And I'm so glad God looks at you and I that you're orphan. You're living in darkness, you're walking in darkness, and you're lost, and you don't know how to make it. I'm your dad. I created you, and I can redeem you because I made a promise to you, and I made provision for you. So I follow Jesus because of his provision. I follow Jesus because of his promise. Matter of fact, look over at verse 25, same chapter. You ready? Talk about the, the, the promise of God. And these things I spoke to you that while being present with you, but the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, He will teach you. You know what the Holy Spirit does every day? He teaches you, Curtis. Donnie teaches you. Steve, He teaches you. Roger, He teaches you. That's what the Holy Spirit does. What's He teaching you? Well, look at the text of the, of the last couple of verse, uh, chapter. Chapter 12, chapter 13, chapter 14. What's He teaching me? Faithfulness, loving, servanthood. Teaching me to be faithful to him and to those around me. Teaching me to be loving to him and those around me. Teaching me to be servant to him and those around me. By the way, do you see how the order he put it in? You'll never be safe. You'll never serve. You'll never be faithful. You'll never be a blessing to anyone until you're serving, loving, and faithful to him first. So he goes on. I'll send you a comforter, and his name shall be the Holy Spirit. Look at verse 26. Peace I leave you. Now look at the text. He said, I'm going to, the, I'm going to go. I'm going to prepare a place for you. I, and, and in my father's house or many mansions. So he's going away and he's going to send a comforter, right? So, but look, what, look at the text. When he sends the comforter, what happens in verse 27? Peace I leave you. Aren't you glad you got peace? And it comes through the promise of God. Look at number three. I follow Jesus because of his provision. I follow Jesus because of his promise. I, I, I follow Jesus because of his path. Let's just go back to chapter 14. Let's start at verse 1 again. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house or many mansions, if it were not so, I've told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you to myself. And where I am, there you may also. And you, you know where I go, and you know the way. And Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you're going. And how can we know the way? Here's the path. You ready? Jesus said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. You know why I follow Jesus? Because he's the path. There's no other way to be forgiven. There's no other way to be saved apart from Christ. You can be a good moral person. You can give your money to the poor. You can sacrifice your body to religious things. That's not the way. You could be a Baptist, you could be a Catholic, you could be a Methodist, you could be a Lutheran, you could be a Presbyterian, you could be every religion in the world. It's not the way. You could be a Democrat, you could be a, a, a Republican, you could be a, an Independent, you could be a Liberal, you could be a Socialist, you could be a, 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 a Conservative. That's not going to get you. Jesus said, the path, I'm the way, I'm the truth, I'm the way. Matter of fact, I love his path. His path goes through Calvary. His path goes to the cross. The Bible said without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sin. And it's not the blood of a bull or a lamb or your life. It's through the Lamb of God who takes away. I'm so glad there's only one path. Man, if there, Dennis, if there are multiple paths, I'd be, I'd be in trouble. Which you know, I got to do? I got to jump through this hoop. I got to jump through that hoop. I got to jump through this hoop. I can't miss this hoop. I got to make sure I jump through all. There's only one path. I am the way. I'm the truth. 
I am the light. You know why I follow Jesus? Is he has made me a promise. He's made me a provision. And he made me a path. Number four, and I'll close with this. Why do I follow Jesus? Because he has made a provision. He's made a promise. He's made a path. And I tell you what, I believe when I read this text, Lazarus jumped out of his skin. Lazarus come running out of that tomb. The Bible says he was there dead for four days. Matter of fact, the Bible says, Lord, don't you know he already stinketh? He's already, his body's already decaying. It's already turning to, to the, the, the earth again. But the Bible says Jesus spoke his name and he rose from the dead. Here's why I follow Jesus. Look at verse 19, that chapter. Verse 19. A little while, he's speaking to his disciples. He said, a little while and the world will see me no more. But you will see me because I live, you will live. You know what verse 19 really is? It's the gospel. He's talking about his life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection. Look what he says. In a little while, the world will see me no more because I'm going to die. But you'll see me. How, what, what, time out, preacher. If he says the world will see me no more and he's going to die, that's the end. And then he says, no, no, the world, will, they, you'll see me. He's talking about his resurrection. You know why I follow Jesus? Because of his power. His power over sin, death, hell, iniquity. He has the power to save. He has the power to raise the dead. He raised Lazarus. Can I can imagine when Lazarus heard his voice, the, just the power alone of his voice. Man, he got out of those dead clothes. And matter of fact, it was later they had to unwrap him from the dead clothes. But he came out of that tomb alive and well. You know what? Christ has made me alive and he's made me well. Now this old earth, this old body, um, I say it all the time. I, as I look at my, my hands, maybe my mom's watching this morning. i got a mother. She's 91 years old. And I love Mavis Sasser. She's awesome. I uh, love Jesus. But I look at my mother's hand. I look at my hand. You know whose hands I've got? i got my mom's hands. And I'm not 91. <laughs> you know how your hands get kind of frail and kind of get wrinkly and you get the veins popping in. And, but i got my mother's hands. And um, I'm 50, I'll be 58 next week. And thank the Lord for 58 years. But uh, here's one thing I've learned. This old body's going to die, Curtis. I've been learning about that in the book of Ecclesiastes. This old body's going to die. But you realize I'll live forever by the power of God. That, 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 that spiritual man that was within me, that soul that God created and breathed life into, it will live forever because of the power of Christ. I have a place that's provided for me. I have a promise that's provided for me. I have a power that's provided for me, and I got a path that's provided for me. The last three weeks, if you're listening by Facebook, we've been asking the question, follow Jesus. Matter of fact, I, I just want to show it to you. Go back to chapter, go back to chapter uh, 14. Now, chapter 13, go to chapter 13. Look at verse 14. I'll close. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed you, you ought to also wash one another's feet. Now watch, verse 15. For I have given you an example that you should follow. I need to be what Jesus is. If you're a follower of Christ, your day, every day, you've got to get up every day. Lord, I just want to follow your example. And Lord, over the last three, three weeks, we've learned some things about your example. You were faithful, knowing all things. You were loving to those who were unlovable. And you served those who would desert you and turn their back on you. Because we know what happened with those 12, right? One actually betrays Jesus, and the other 11, when the, when, when, when the fire got turned up kind of hot, they abandoned ship and ran. Did Jesus know that? Yet he loved them, served them, and was faithful to them. Now, you and I can sit here right now, well, shame on those boys. Use one. Use one, use one, use one, use one, use the one, and y'all's the one. We're all guilty. So this morning, as a follower of Christ, I want to challenge you as we go through troubled life, as we go through heartache, God, in the midst of my troubled times, thank you that 
you made me a promise. Thank you that you made me a provision. Thank you you made me a path. Thank you that you gave me power. Hey, this morning, if you're watching, and you don't know Jesus, you need him. For he loves you, he's faithful to you, and he serves you even to this day. Even though you reject him, he desires that all men be saved. He wants to save you, redeem you, and not make you orphans. Hey, this morning you could be saved. Maybe this guy, I'm sitting here, and it's all men in this room right now. <laughs> you know what, Curtis, I'm so glad I'm saved. How about you? Dennis, I'm so glad. Don, I'm so glad. Mike, I'm so glad. Jared, I'm so glad. Roger, Steve, aren't you glad you know Jesus? Can I challenge this men this morning? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight guys. When we leave today, by the power of that Holy Spirit, let's be faithful to the Word of God, to the call of God. Let us be faithful to God. Let us be loving to God in our attitude in our behavior, in our conduct, in our mannerisms, in our let us be loving to God. Let's serve Jesus in good days and bad days. COVID or no COVID, job or no job, health or no health, let us be faithful. And here's one thing I've learned about the Word of God. When we begin to move in that arena of following Jesus, His example, it's amazing what the power of God will do in your life and those around you, and how he would change things in you, around you, and through you. Let's pray. Father, I thank this day. What a good word it is. And Father, I thank for the word of God. And Father, the gospel is the power unto salvation. The resurrection of Jesus from the dead is the power of the gospel. His life, his death, his burial, and his resurrection is the power of God unto salvation. And there are many maybe watching by Facebook or the computer. They've never experienced the resurrection. They've never experienced the power of God. They've never called upon the Lord Jesus to be saved. But I pray this morning to be saved. Father, Holy Spirit, I pray that you convict. I pray that you humble. I pray, Father, that you speak. And men and women will fall on their knees and say, God, I need you. I'm an orphan. I'm all alone. I've got troubles. I need you. Save me from my sins. Be my Lord. Be my Savior. Father, I pray for these eight men that are with me this morning. I ask God that you do in their lives what only you can do. I don't live with them. I don't see them on our daily activities. I don't see them on a daily basis. But the Word of God penetrate their heart. Draw them into faithfulness. Draw them into love. Draw them into servitude. Again, Lord, bless this day. Have your will. For it's in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Curtis, I mean, uh, Jared, you come and sing. And as he sings, may God have his way. Hey, as we play, I, I, I don't want to miss this opportunity. But maybe you're a member of Callahan Road Baptist Church. Maybe you're not. Maybe you visit us for a while. Or you've never seen us before. Maybe this is your first time finding us. I don't want to miss the opportunity to tell you that Jesus loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. And Jesus rose from the dead for you. Just for you. With all your sin and all your iniquity and all your filthiness in your mind, in your heart, in your mouth, in your life. You could be a prostitute. You could be a drug addict. You could be a church member. You could be a deacon. 
There's only one salvation. There's only one path. It's the gospel. And maybe the Holy Spirit, I don't think there's a maybe. If the Holy Spirit has spoken to you about being saved, you don't need to waste a single second. You don't need to waste another minute. You need to call out to God. So can I help you do that? Let's pray. Father, I thank you, Lord. I pray for that one that's watching, that one that's listening, that one that's looking. Oh, God, I pray that they cry out to you, the living God. I pray to be saved. Why? Because you're faithful and you're loving and you're serving. Holy Spirit, you do what only you can do. So, Father, I want to help that individual lady or that guy. I want to help them. So if you want to be saved, and you mean it, it's from your heart, it's from your soul, you're broken, you're in trouble. Would you just pray something like this, Lord Jesus, I'm in trouble, and I'm broken. I need your provision, I need your promise, and I'm going to take your path. I confess that I'm a sinner, I confess that I'm undone, and I deserve and death called hell. I deserve that. I know that. But God, I'm going to trust your power to save me. So Lord Jesus, I make you my Lord. I make you my Savior. And I ask you to come into my heart, to my life. You be Lord of all. I believe this. I trust this. And I profess Christ. Of course, in his name I pray. Amen. If you prayed something like that, and you mean business, I would encourage you, please, today, if all possible, reach out to us. Let us know what's going on. I want to pray for you encourage you. And I want to sing that verse one more. Because here's that verse you want to sing. Lord, thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Jesus, we just want to thank you. Thank you for being so good. Again, reach out to us. Love to just encourage you, walk you through this newfound faith in Christ. Again, if you're a part of Callahan Road Baptist Church, thank you for being patient with us. Thank you for being diligent. I would ask you to continue to tap in on Sunday mornings about 11 o'clock. Not this Wednesday, but probably the next Wednesday after Thanksgiving. Uh, I'll probably go back to Wednesday night's Bible study online again that we did a couple uh, when we first started COVID. I'll be sitting down here on a chair with my table and my word, and I'll be teaching. And so we'll start that on a Wednesday night. I think that's 630, is it not? So anyway, we'll get the word out to you. Uh, just if we can help you, we'd love to help you. I know right now we're kind of limited on what we can do, what we can't do. Uh, again, pray for those about Christ, and uh, the Lord will. Have a great Thanksgiving. Uh, eat a lot of turkey. Uh, eat a lot of dressing. Just don't overdo it. You know how that goes? I mean, God bless you guys. Love you. We'll see you next week. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah. Don't, don't forget you can give online. Uh, our offering plate is still open. Yes. You can give online at callahan.church or crbchurch.com. Uh, and don't forget to do that. Let me, let me share just a little bit. You, you know I've been your pastor. Matter of fact, March of next year will be 15 years. It's been a great ride. Been a great, I've enjoyed every moment of it. Uh, and you've, in the 15 years, you know me. I've really never, really, ever really preached hard. Got to give, got to give, got to give. Now, I'll preach on stewardship. I preach on tithing, I preach on response, I preach that boldly. But I've never really been a money campaigner. I really haven't, but I'm going to challenge you. These last few months have been very trying to Callahan Road Baptist Church and our finances. Uh, we don't want to cut any ministries, we don't want to cut any um, um, opportunity to share the gospel, and we're not cutting anything. But right now we've kind of taken a, a, a pretty strong hit over the last six to seven months. If you're not giving faithful, I want to ask you to give. If you are giving, thank you for giving. And uh, if you're able to just love on the church a little bit during the holiday season, we greatly appreciate it. But you can do it online or you can mail it in, one of the two. Amen? God bless you guys. Y'all have a great day. Am I done now? Yeah, you're done now. All right, see ya.